to the FTN Show. Hey everybody, welcome to Forge the Narrative. My name is Paul, your host for the Battle of Lost Souls podcast. I'm joined tonight by Adam Camilleri. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> and Red Powell. Good evening. Oh, so if you're listening to us, we just had a disastrous attempt at uh, live streaming, but we're going to be back for next week. It was week. pretty thorough. <laughs> no one can say we're not thorough. No. But thanks for the instant feedback. I mean, really, it was uh, people tuning in. I really appreciate it. It's going to be, this will be up on the YouTube channel. We're going to be streaming to YouTube and Twitch and should be able to get it figured out, probably Facebook as well. So I'm uh, going to make it a regular thing as soon as I figure out how not to get the audio reverb, which is what we're getting. Man, so thanks for the patience. Yeah, it seems like an interesting conundrum. Yeah, so on this show, I've got a very special segment to insert with Carl Tuttle. Uh, he's such a, a great guy. You know, really happy to call him a friend. Host of the independent characters. Uh, real, like he's everything you love about the hobby and, and why we're in this. Or one of the reasons that we're, that we're in this. You know, seeing, meeting people like, like Carl around the country, all around the world. And we're going to talk about some of the preview stuff, man. Some of the preview stuff. Uh, and by the time you're hearing this, it's probably time to talk about some more preview stuff. I am so keen for this preview stuff and we'll get to why <laughs> pretty ob pretty obvious though to, to anybody who's actually listened to me talk. i think yeah if they've listened we could even start with that the lion man oh uh, yeah okay so oh my goodness i'm so happy he's finally got a model i'm so happy he's got a model with options when the so the first picture they put up he had a chain sword and I left a lot of people scratching their head. He had a, yeah, yeah, he had like a, he had essentially like an eviscerator, the same as like a two hand chainsaw, the same as what Dawn uses. And uh, everyone was like, the hell is that? But um, I almost didn't I, think it was actually, him because of that. Exactly the same. I almost like, well, this is going to be someone else, but the scale's all wrong. He's huge. Like, who else could this be? Oh, fair the is. helmet, uh, I've heard a lot of people, <laughs> well, it's a Megon, obviously. Um, I've heard a lot of people who have gripes with the helmet head, but um, he's also got a pretty amazing bear head. No, I mean, man. I think only... That helmet head looks cool. That, I mean, they both heads look cool. It's it's sick. That helmet is sick. Well, the whole model is sick. Like, I, I have no issues with any part of that model. It yeah. all, is all amazing to me. Yeah, and I've heard some people that are a little, you know, they were seemingly disappointed that it was a 30K miniature. But come on. I mean, those... Where, I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, there have been a whole series of articles about the Road to Thramus, which is the Thramus campaign, for those who don't know, which is the Dark Angels versus Night Lords, which is, has an amazing depth of fluff to it. I think the I think the Lion and Kurz fight three or four different occasions throughout the story of that crusade, and, and it, it culminates with... Um, sorry? Oh no, it's it's awesome. The whole the whole arc of them yeah. fighting is amazing. And one of the one of the fights, I think one of the first ones, the only one that uh, Conrad happened to win, by the way, uh, he wow. um, he had his uh, hands around the lion's neck, and uh, Corswain, who's a character that I'm really keen to hear and learn a lot more about, comes up behind uh, Night Horner and rams his his sword all the way through his spine, like the whole way through his body. That is just so cool. And, and you know what the Night Horner does? He's just like I don't know just if we can keeps, he's just, he's just, I don't know if we can say spoilers. That's that's in a that's in a Horace Heresy book that's been a, that's been out for like ten years. Oh, ten years. So okay. I, I do apologize if that is if that is spoilers for anybody, but um, that <laughs> that story's been around forever. <laughs> and do you know what the Night does? He just gets more <laughs> stuff. He's just like, who put this? Who put this sword here? That's not supposed to be there. Yeah, I've never but been now, like yeah. a big they, Night they, Lords fan. I think there was like a brief moment where I really liked their helmets, the ones you know, the big bat ears or whatever. Mm, and I talked myself yeah, out of wings. it pr pretty quickly. So I'm, yeah. I'm actually, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm uh, after reading the trilogy book that ADB wrote ADB. for um, mm -hmm. the, yeah, for the, the, not the Night Hunter, the Soul Hunter. Man, that is such a good series that if you haven't read that trilogy, I highly recommend it. He did such a great job, like, and that really sunk in the, the renegade, you know, post- Horus Heresy Chaos Legion deal for me. I really thought that was great, and kind of their remembrance, their how they how they remember and have memorialized Conrad Curse. Like it was just so it was a really good book. And you, what you're talking about those fights, I kind of thought actually because of reading that stuff, I thought that was Corswain. Is that how you say his name? The uh, yeah, you know, yeah. When you saw the chain sword, that I thought that was him initially. I, 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 thought it was. I thought it was going to be either him or Holguin. Hol Holguin. I can't remember. Yeah, the yeah. other one. You, you never, you never, you never rightly know how to pronounce their names. Like <laughs> I, someone's probably think, oh, it's Holguin or whatever. But he's like the um, he's the first captain of the Death. I'm I'm about uh, three quarters of the way through the Lion book, 
uh, the mm. novel, and it's good. It's really good. I thought the I'm first so thing I, when I saw book. that model, I was like, I bet that chainsaw is going to be in the running for best chainsaw thing. It has to be, doesn't it? Well, you would imagine, right? But we were just talking that you know, the Ragnar had a very probably the, one of the best imperial chainswords outside of Dorne, and then lo and behold, here comes another chainsaw. Yeah, well, this is the lion <laughs> sword. Um, so that's the lion. It's the the wolf blade, I think it is. Which uh, I actually don't know the background behind, but if I was to take a punt, it's the sword he uses in the rest of the story after his. Um, so in Unremembered Empire, he has a bit of a you know this isn't spoilers either. This has been around forever. He has a bit of a falling out with uh, mostly Gilliman, but Sanguinius also, and. Um, <laughs> He gets his sword broken. And so I was thinking, oh, if the wolf blade, maybe that's the sword he, he uses after the lion's blade gets broken. broken. Well, we know where the, the lion's blade is. It's on Cypher's back. Like, it's on Cypher's back. Now. I've used, how good is the memes of... Um, oh, that's so funny. Of, it's so yeah, funny. Of the lion wielding <laughs> Cypher as a sword. <laughs> well, that's what you know, I said. The I mark I... of any great 40K hero or Warhammer hero is a plasma pistol. So you get one however you can, right? Even if you happen to have to wield... The person that's right <laughs> i never knew that there, there a few fusil arcadus or there's a fusil um that is the special weapon of like the the ranged weapon of um of the lion in the novels and um i never i never knew that before and it's it's oh, so much cool stuff in that book about how there's i don't know if, if anybody knows about um the different wings of the hex and manga wagatron or whatever it is but um <laughs> Did you say the hex and manga wagatron <laughs> yeah the hex and megatron the hex and megatron the six wings of the <laughs> Killing it, so like you were killing it tonight. First. Oh, dude, I, I'm all over it. Like, just, just this brain is just are firing on all cylinders. Um, <laughs> but the uh, oh, geez, I don't know what's going on in my head. But the final sanction guys, the guys who come down, and we are the, we are dark angels, and we are death. We are here, and we are death. What's their name? They're the um, the hourglass symboled dudes. Ah, no one knows what's the answer their, to this. What's their wing? What's their wing? God, this is going to be awful. You have to edit this out. It's terrific. No, don't edit it out. It's magnificent. <laughs> it shows people the quality content that they can expect from Adam Camilleri. It's just this, this kind of top shelf glory. <laughs> I'm sure it's impressive. Let's uh, uh, let's talk about the, uh, the one of the other big miniature. I don't know who coined the phrase "beefer of secrets." Mm, and I should mention one. this. Now. There were some really in, good in ones the, in the talk with Carl, but that is hilarious. And the it's fact that they've really transformed the the elves. You know, the elves not known for you know wielding big hammers or worshiping a mountain or whatever. You know, living in the mountains as opposed to a forest and stuff. But they've really transformed that into a different story. And we've got this what I consider a pretty cool miniature with a couple of variants. Same thing they did. So I guess it's got the two variants like they did for. Uh, the Deepkin avatar. So this is you know two forms of of this big model, and I don't know, they both look cool. I agree. I'm not sure why they've gone with a cow motif. I'm I'm curious to see how they managed to do that with, especially in the lore, uh, fluff wise, of all the of all the things they could have done. They're like, you know what we're gonna do, guys, sitting around the boardroom, a cow. Well, I mean, what they've done, what they've really done with. Sigmar is they've transformed it from just a Tolkien clone. I mean, like all fantasy, D D, whatever. Like think about it this way: Tolkien is the first one to ever make elves a PC race. Mm. He's know? the yeah, he's the kind of father of deep fantasy. Yeah, now, elves are always what been, I think you know, they were always the enemy or the things that stole your baby or your your your, your mm. mushrooms or whatever. And and then we get this this Tolkien esque fantasy that made the the elves what really what we think of elves dwarves what we think of dwarves and every yep. other fantasy based game that's come from that has just been some type of variation of that and now sigmar has its own identity they've gone they've really gone uh, out of their way to give to to break tropes to break from traditional deep fantasy and to kind of create their own aesthetics which i absolutely applaud um whether their choices make sense and are cohesive and things i think that's uh, that's certainly up for debate but uh like we've got under the under the sea elves we've got sky dwarves instead of under the ground dwarves we've got sky dwarves like well, let's let's completely flip that coin yeah. and go for the other side of things i don't um, mind and now I, mean, I but, guess the they're held up by the, the magnitude of the models themselves right because the the airships look great all the 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 steam powered you know lack of mag, of micro engineering type steam stuff uh like it all it all looks well amazing. i i I applaud the bravery of G-Dub. I mean, I know there's probably a whole lot of uh, IP considerations to take into account with these things. 
and uh, of what they can safely, you know, copyright and can't. But just the the cojones to step so far away from the beaten track um, when it comes to things like this. Like people could have just rejected Sky Sky Dwarves wholesale and just been like, "That's so absurd. I'm not going to buy." That's not it. the fantasy um, we want to live in. Uh, yeah. That's exactly. That's not the, that's not the narrative we we like, and it's not the narrative we want to invest in. And well, to, frankly, we haven't. I mean, another great one is um, not the uh, is it the Iron Jaws? Because forever orcs have been like the mob, the the big mobbed up, yep. massed infantry, massed anything, and Iron Jaws are a super elite, super super elite army. So even just within, even sticking to the trope, the whole green screened brute kind of, I guess, stereotype, they're still breaking away in some way. And I again, I absolutely applaud that. I think it's fantastic for this, uh, which is the it's the Avonlore, or sorry. Avalnor, the Stoneheart King. I think I'd be hard pressed not to make the special character, but I mean, I'm going into it rules unseen. I don't I have no, I have no idea what it is, but it, yeah. it, it, he looks pretty cool. And I like that two hammer thing. And then you got these elves that are also wielding hammers, which is not something that you, you would normally see. associate. Yeah. It's not something you associate with them. Um, what were white lions back in the day? They had two end axes, didn't they? They did. Uh, sword, were, right. I th- Oh no, no, you're right. No, you're there's, right. My bad, um, my bad. Yeah, there's yeah, the, yeah, there's the the Phoenix Guard or whatever that had the pole arms and cloaks and stuff, and then you you had the the White Lions of Chars, I think is what, what they were, uh, mm-hmm. and then I can't remember who what were the name of the sword unit was, but there was a whole other unit. Uh, Great. Uh, yeah, there were Swordmasters. Yeah, Phoenix, Swordmasters Phoenix. of Hoist. That's that's what. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, so yeah, you have to imagine though that this plays into some other lore, right? Like I don't know if this has anything with the you know the chaos dwarves, and I don't know where Hashut is from. Well, I mean, so like, so so I mean, Sigmar Sigmar is the dude, right? Like, given how Age of Sigmar played out, like he created everything more or less to whatever extent, you know, and then and then chaos rose back up, and so like he is. I mean, so the the fact that you know Teclas still helped kind of. Uh, I, yeah, I haven't got to read the the new the newer material. I mean, I've been reading what they've been releasing in the the you know the previews and whatnot, but like. The the deep kin are kind of like a failed recreation, right? And no uh, souls. Right, right. And he like he like messed up and so then he goes back and I'm guessing these are these are kind of the the the, the product that made it, right? Like this is because I, I guess he's supposed to have something to do with these guys. From yeah, what I was reading. There's, he has a model. He has a it's he's got a weird yeah. model. Like he it's techless, but it's it's like a beast with a little techless. Not... Yeah, 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 and then yeah. well, and then it, they, there's that that cool armor, right? Have you seen the armor yeah. that has like nobody inside of it? Yeah, it's almost like a ghost. Uh, that that model is incredible. Is it Alarian? It is. is that, I don't know. I can, is that the character? Yeah, but it's, it's a, like just like, a, like a ghost Tyrion almost. Yeah, my brain's doing even weirder things today. But is there a correlation between Deepkin and Necrons? How they have um, these guys with souls and personalities c- controlling a huge array of guys who don't have souls and personalities? Is that a thing? <laughs> that I think you just made it something. That is the the deep. Yeah, I'm not tripping. Am I? That's, that's... They're harvesting souls from other people to to make more deep kin. Like you have to, you can't. They can't come yeah, my... into being without the the souls. Yeah, my my the kind of connection I drew, and I, I know there's still more to come because I mean Malik or Malerian as as he's now called um, has not obviously been revealed uh, from where he's at, but the. The deepkin are kind of I I I, I kind of saw more similarities between them and like the dark Eldar uh, uh, from 40k and that they don't you know they have to keep drawing on other beings in order to to sustain themselves. Yeah, pleasure from pain kind of thing. Yeah, I mean for them you know but for the deepkin is more less, souls. less pleasure more yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. more um life sustaining right. No, cool. Yeah, I I think this these Sorry. models are absolutely gorgeous. The just the the flow of them I really like, and yeah, it's gonna take me a little bit to get used to the the cow. I mean, that's really much. yeah. Well, I just don't understand why a cow. Um, I, hopefully, there's a very good reason for it, which I'll discover in time. But well, at the moment, about, I'm just like they they talk about the symbiotic relationship between the elves and where they live, which is on this in these mount on you know on top of the mountains or whatever, and that they kind of have to the elves have to appease this god or they don't get food or something or you know something like that i mean it's very uh if if they are live in homeostasis with their environment then it works a lot better for them and i guess that's why they're using hammers now so elves are back with 100 percent more hammers 
<laughs> but whatever, I'm That's down. Yeah, cool. I think the I I, I, I yeah, like the, the contrast of the the kind of what seemingly unwieldy nature of the hammer with this kind of graceful look and flow of the of the figures themselves. I do not know how they swing those hammers without knocking the horns of their backpacks. I just, <laughs> you know, I want to. Know, I look at them and I just want to know more. It's good. I suppose that's what you want out of a out of a miniature. You want to look at it and be intrigued. You want to know where it's coming from, what it's and what it's going to offer to your uh, hobby experience. Yeah, and we're, we're talking. I suppose about like. The- the stuff with the elves here. So, you know, we're talking about the, the rebranding of of uh, of these characters and uh, characteristics within Sigmar. You know, they do produce Lord of the Rings, which has that yeah, that's very true. That whole elf thing we were just talking about. So, you know, they now they've they've got two distinct looking lines before, which you know they were kind of blended back when they had the old world and, and yeah, that's a really good point. Stuff. I mean, they they they've differentiated themselves. Uh, from the other fantasy-based market, at the same time holding down the core and the root of it, which is Tolkien-based fantasy. So, I mean, whatever, I'm cool with it. <laughs> yeah, that's actually really true. They've got both ends of the spectrum now. Yeah. And, all, we, and, all we really need now is some kind of Cthulhu-esque. Um, I suppose the Deepkin could be yeah. could have could have gone that that way, couldn't they? That's that's the way they are, Mom. I, I have a Deepkin army as well, and specifically for that. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, like. Love, Lovecraftian is is I don't want to say it's it's quite grimdark, but oh, it is it is something. And um, it's, it's my jam. Yeah. I think it's a, such a such a unique aesthetic that it should be somewhere within like the lexicon of forty of sorry not forty k of um of games workshop. Yeah, it's already in forty k. Should be some kind of parody. Yeah, you know, right. Uh, and and if you've never read any of Lovecraft's contemporaries, like the the people that you know he shared ideas with and letters with and stuff, it's it's kind of worth checking them out. Like Clark Ashton Smith. It's even it's kind of weird. Like the Conan stories are set in the Lovecraft. World, if you didn't really if you didn't know that, yeah, yeah. If you didn't know that, but I, I had no idea. That's incredible. So it's neat. Love that kind of stuff. Uh, same with like Edgar Allan Poe. I mean, not, they're not related in any way, but I mean, I like that that style of of horror and suspense better than some of mm. the other stuff. I, I like the um, I like how it's intrinsically kind of linked with sanity and insanity, and always of the kind of duality of the mind versus the, what you see and what you feel, and always not being the same thing. Like living in realms beyond, you know, the norm. I, yeah, I really well, love it. I love it so much. Absolutely, and and you think about it like in 40k. We kind of have similar concepts in regards that there's this running theme in, in Lovecraftian literature and whatnot, that there is this deep, deep darkness in the background of everything that uh, is this like impending yeah. doom kind of deal that you can't, you can't get away yeah. from. Yeah, it's inescapable. <laughs> exactly. It's coming for you and it's going to get you. And when you think about it, we've kind of, uh, you know, like if, when you read some of the literature from 40K, like they talk about how just to talk about chaos invites it in and can can already start to taint mm-hmm. you. And, and legitimately, like, you know, they, they're, you read in some of the books, like people don't even know the names of the chaos gods, whereas us, like, you know, the, the audience of the game and the literature and the lore and everything, like, we're like, oh, you know, corny, corn, 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 or we say whatever. But like in 40K, yeah. like you say somebody's name and you can invoke these, like, I mean, you can invite demons upon yourself and whatnot. Like just just being born on the wrong planet that just happens to have, I mean, you talk about the lion, right? Like the dark forest and everything like that. Yeah. Yep. I mean, there's a lot to that. So that's so, it's so Brothers of Grimm as well with, uh, it's almost fairy tale-esque. Yeah, uh, the line in the forest, kind of, um, and all with all the monsters and stuff, Hansel and Gretel. Yeah. It's yeah, that's one of the neat things about everything. Uh, like Warcry, for instance, is that the you know they they don't know what types of chaos god that they're worshiping or whatever, and they're they don't they're they wouldn't even know they're followers of chaos, but they're right there on the you know on the edge. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's really cool. I like it. Let's let's take a quick break. Let's uh, I'm gonna let's take a break. I'll put it in that segment with Carl and, and me, and then we'll come back with you guys. See you in a minute. FTN is brought to you by Discount Games Inc. Please visit them at www.discountgamesinc.com, and don't forget to ask Jay about ways to save even more on your hobby projects. Hey everybody, welcome to a very special segment of Forge the Narrative. I am joined by the host of the independent characters, Mr. Carl Tuttle. Hey Paul, how's it going, man? Carl, man, thanks for coming on. Yeah, well, we haven't talked in a while, and I kind of want to just catch up with you and see how you're doing. And amidst you know all the uh, the excitement of 
of uh, shelter in place and uh, yeah. Well, I mean, one of the, Adepticon. one of the biggest heartbreaks the, uh, of this past Adepticon, Adepticant weekend, uh, yeah. was you and I were going to play a game. Yeah, for sure. I, I had so many games scheduled with people, uh, with Campbell and Dan from, uh, from 40k Badcast. We were going to play a team game with my buddy Jody and, you know, just, just meeting. I think the thing that bummed me out the most about all that was, um, not just, missing games with you and you know seeing you and and seeing all my friends and stuff was just the socialization piece of that i talk about how for me adepticon is more exciting than christmas <laughs> and <laughs> it, it really is is that because you get to buy all your presents for yourself <laughs> yeah well i do that all the time anyway <laughs> uh, my wife won't buy me 40k stuff because she's like you just buy whatever you want no like, yeah well you know uh, but, you know, it's just like seeing all my friends there and I've, I've made so many good connections there. And, and and you know, all these people come from who either listen to my show or, or I listen to their stuff or watch their stuff or whatever. And we all, you know, get together and we get to talk and share ideas and and laugh and drink and and um, just have a great time. And yeah, it's almost like a family reunion. I mean, that's really, just, you know, yeah. it, uh, more than anything, it totally. Is. And yeah. I feel like. You know, Christmas got canceled for me and I just uh, I was like, Dang, you know, I was, I was really holding out hope, but I, I knew it was the right move. Um, you know, I'm glad they made the choice they made. And, and um, well, and, their communication has been great, too. I mean, that's really something. I mean, look, people go. They obviously know it's a great convention. We, we both talk about how awesome it is and the people that run it. Uh, really good people. People, you know, that uh, if I. If Whenever I see them in other places and happy to spend time with them in other places, you know, not not just their own convention, but I mean they're just, just yeah. good folks and and they've they've tried to be as as uh, communicative as possible given yeah. the, given the the rapidly evolving situation. Yeah, and plus, I mean, there was a lot of money on the line, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. for for them, for vendors, for everybody, it's a lot of money invested. I mean, look at this. Remember when it was back at the Westin? I mean, I thought that was a big convention at the Westin, and then it moved to that convention center, and I'm like, and they're 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 pushing maximum density at the convention center, right? They're busting out of the halls there. So is that that right spot though, man? Because I feel like I, everywhere you turn, there's some gaming, but it's still not big enough to where you can't find a seat in the lobby or something. You know, very so I feel like it's just right there. Yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. It's just, yeah. So, I mean, you know, look, I think the, the great thing was I was concerned that this was going to damage them to the point where that was it. Adepticon's over. And fortunately they've already released like their 2021 dates to tell everybody, Hey, you know, here's, here's this. And, and they, they've offered options for how you want to deal with a refund or a credit towards next year, or, you know, what uh, do you want to offer a donation? I, I just gave them my, my, uh, stuff as a donation though i did I, say I, did send me, I said send me send me the thing because i got into the vig program uh, me too I, I, was, just, I, I just said you know look just take it you know i i know what it's like being someone who's run events before i know i i, I know exactly yeah. what well i mean not mm-hmm. maybe not at the scale of course but i i, I know what they must be kind of thinking and if 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 i could take a little bit of pressure off that then even a small amount i did now i'm not trying to encourage other people to do that or tell them anybody what they should be doing because everyone's got to be making a decision themselves but sure i went ahead and just if said, you can you know, if you yeah. can and, and you've loved that event as long as we have I, I mean i think it's a it's a great gesture and you know i mean like matt weeks and and hank and and you know all the guys that are working on this like the stress that they must have gone through i don't even imagine you yeah, know how I mean, right there on that where you're on the bleeding edge of of not knowing you know what's going to happen right what's the right thing to do you can you can there's so many directions you could have been pulled in there to make a call that wasn't the right thing and then yeah. it just makes yeah. and you know people are even further concerned you know i think it was probably a breath of you know, a relief a bubble pop for a lot of attendees that when the when the call was finally made that yeah. they don't have to stress and if potentially they don't could, have to make yeah. the decision right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I mean, so what were you gonna do this year at the Defcon? What okay. other than play me, which would have been clearly the highlight. The of highlight. Your- oh well, I guess <laughs> one of the benefits of this is that I have no excuse not to finish my army for next year. That's that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna bring my 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 Zeech demons actually. I was gonna bring my Zeech demons, um, but I've been working on this Black Legion force, and you know, next year I may may just bring that. I don't so know. I was making a display for the team tournaments, and the you know team tournaments a four man team forty k tournament, yeah. and so I was I made four individual 
um, like one foot wide, one foot deep by about a foot and a half, a little bit more tall sections okay. that all stand together. They make about a five and a half foot, you know, column of display okay. for blood angels. And I finished three sections. <laughs> I mean, I was going to, I had set aside time, you know, the, that, You'd have made it. yeah, yeah. I, 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 I've never, I've never not made it, but right. it was, it was still, it's one of those kind of, uh, I mean, I don't want to say I procrastinated because I don't typically procrastinate, but I felt like it was going to be a little bit of a struggle. Hey, let me ask you this. So you were doing the team tournament, obviously. Yeah. Are you next year going to plan to do the team tournament? And will you go with the same well, concept? I am a filthy meta chaser. Okay. Oh, okay. So, but oh. <laughs> the team tournament is a little bit more flexible. Right. And if there's any possible way to play Blood Angels, I definitely yeah. will. Okay. I mean, okay. that's, that's the army I want to play. I want to. And so if there's, you know, if it's, they're even remotely playable in the format or in the, the meta quote unquote, then they're going to get played. And so I, I, this, the display, I mean, it's, it's actually, it's pretty cool. I mean, once it gets all finished, I think it's going to look real crisp. It's got some, some technology elements to it, some structural elements to it. And it fits in. What I did was I went to FedEx and I got a big enough box, uh, that was, uh, well, I split the difference between size and economy of shipping. Yeah. And then just built to fit uh, the bo- the interior of the box with enough padding. So, uh, you know, I was going to get built, built in this way, put in the box, shipped, shipped back, you know. So <laughs> it's going to get used. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Uh, we, so it's not a wasted effort. I don't think it? so. I don't think okay. so. I mean, it can be used. The display can be used in other tournaments. You know, it's not, not necessarily single use. Sure. And I built it, though, to be where – each one of the team team members could have their own display. You could take it on. But I learned some things along the way. I think if I was doing it over again and maybe through the course of a year, I might slightly remake one of the sections. Mm. Then, you know, you know, whatever. I'm not, I have no skill at YouTube university, most of how to do this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I'm, so, I'm proud of it though. Other than the team tournament, what kind of events or classes were you signed up for? Man, I keep it real loose. Um, yeah, me too. You know, I basically, I just like to wander around and talk and look at the vendor, ex, you know, exhibition hall. I like to maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know, get on a stream and jibber jab yeah. uh, somewhere. Oh, right. Cause you're doing the, uh, the, um, the 40K news, uh, stream thing. If they let me, you know, uh, this is, uh, that was so fun in Vegas though. That was, yeah. I, I watched some of you, uh, some of you on there. Oh, uh, that I team. Didn't go to Vegas, so. All stars, just being part of a team that, I mean, just gave one, I mean, you hear it, we're going to give 110%, you know, you hear that stuff, but these, everyone was doing their part to make that successful at wow. a, at a very high level, a demanding level for that long. And it was amazing. We're so happy to be a part of it. So happy to be invited by that, by the Stats Center team to be a part of it. Well, that's very cool. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So you keep it loose. Yeah. I probably visit the shopping area, the vendor hall six to ten times while oh, i'm there right yeah i love like, to meander you got nothing else to do. let's go wander around and see if i can spend some money on something i really don't need well and then <laughs> just you know walking up and down i, I try not to do that that trek oh between, yeah, yeah that too now uh the the elevator and the what you call it you know the the vendor area uh too yeah. many times uh but every time you do you run into three or four people you know and so you get yeah. to have little hangouts along the way yeah man so yeah that i was i was was gonna bring my army right so i mean i was gonna be able to play and and i've been really into kill team and most recently been into necromunda yeah yeah we've been kind of experimenting with that here too i was going to do uh so i had a bunch of games set up you were one of them uh you know as i said dan and campbell and a few others and um you know i was going to the the reveal thing i was very excited about that now that we've only seen half of it i'm kind of like anxious to see what happens this coming that, Saturday that was still cool. Uh, I don't know who came oh. up with the, the term uh, beefer of secrets, <laughs> but that is hilarious. That was funny. I, I got to tell you uh, the lion that for a Primark model, I got to say that was that boy. I think he's the best looking Primark model they've done. Oh, you hush. Sanguinous nope. is the best. No, nope. no, nope. no way. Dude, this guy is incredible. Like I wanted to start a dark angels army after I saw him. He, he does look pretty brutal. I, I'll give you that. Yes. He's got, he's got a good defiant pose. Uh, yeah, he, he's good. See, see, the thing is, you're biased, right? You have a bias there. You know, so, so I can have a bias and still be you're, right. Okay, well, okay, but it's more likely <laughs> 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 you have a bias and you're wrong. I had like 
never really even cared about the lion. Like Dark Angels have been kind of for me, eh, you know, I think they're interesting, but you know, I'm not playing one. There was a point where I was going to do like a kill team one, but then I was like, eh, you know, whatever. And then I saw that guy and I was like, oh man, he is awesome looking. <laughs> Like I, I was just blown away. His, so. Okay, now you. Oh my god! You have several armies. I mean, I know you. You're a collector. You got you got several things. Yeah. I, I just yes. saw that you you picked up some some sisters of battle, and I want to talk about that with you. But yeah. isn't do you find that in a very cool moment where you see something and you are like I previously and you do this you register it. I previously had no interest in this, and yeah. now I would like to know more. For sure, for sure. I mean, and that was a, that was an instance of that where I saw that and I thought. You know, I'm not playing 30k right now. <laughs> Do I really need? No, I really don't. Uh, you know, and and so I just I kind of begged off of it. But um, but man, it was it, 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 the thought did cross my mind. And you know, I mean, every now and then they come out with some models that I'm just like, wow, that is really impressive. Do I have room for that? You know, um, I mean, as you said, I'm a collector, so I have a lot of armies at this point, and. The reality is, like, I don't really need another army. Uh, the Sisters of Battle that I did pick up, um, yeah, I just purchased the second half of my order, um, is kind of been a lifelong thing. Like, I've been very interested in that army, and I've always said, man, if they come out with that in plastic, I am buying it. So I really just A made lot good. of people cashing in their chips on that one. Like, oh, yep. I oh. really made good on my promise, right? <laughs> and, and so, uh, to be fair, it's it's going to sit in a closet for a while. Um, I'm working this black Legion stuff right now. Um, and so once I, the black Legion for me though, is going to be like a long-term project. Mm -hmm. Like I'll have a playable force and then I'll always be adding stuff to it. So it will never be quote unquote finished. It will just continue to grow. Um, the sisters will be finished. Like I'm not going to continue to grow that, but I am going to have a, a sizable force of them by the time I'm done. So they're, they're amazing. The, the models are just everything I could have hoped for. And I just think they're incredible. I recently picked up just a very small amount of sisters. You know, I mentioned on a, on a, a couple of shows ago, not to get, not to be weighty or whatever, that there's a mm -hmm. lot of businesses out there that are, you know, probably going to go into a period of struggling. And so if you can support them to, to do it, especially if they're, if they're your go-tos and you yeah. have the, yeah. the ability, right? So I've just, I got, Enough to make a sister's kill team uh, mm -hmm. from a, a store owner that I know. Yeah. And I can't. Yeah. And it, look, it didn't take that much convincing either. I was like, what can I get? You know what? <laughs> right. These models are awesome. Let me let me make a kill team. <laughs> yeah, I think you raise an interesting point. I mean, not to belabor it, but, you know, it's a tough time. And if you are if you are able to and these places have provided you entertainment, it's worth supporting them. I mean, that's I think that's fair. I feel bad for the vendors that were and the artists that were going to be at adepticon and you know they bank on some of those sales for a while and this really hurts them um so you know they had the adepticant thing going on um i bought some stuff from a few vendors uh that i know and support and, and really care about and um you know if you can do it you can do it if you can't you can't and that's fine too yeah um, no not everybody can i mean they, there's again you got to make the right decision for you so this is not sure. trying to be preachy or virtue signal or whatever this is just if you happen to keep it top of mind to where it may really make sure. a difference you know for sure yeah so yeah so i made um i made that sizable sisters purchase which i'm really happy about and uh you know like i i almost started pulling them apart and like assembling them and i'm like now nah, i gotta stay on target with this <laughs> This thing I'm on. Well, you know, there's they got dual kits. Like that's the that's what they do now. They put out a kit that can be a couple of different squads. And you know, I thought, man, this is just perfect because I I want to put these models together. I want to build them. Actually, I'm a big fan of a of a band called Sisters of Mercy. It has nothing to do mm -hmm. with nuns or whatever, you know whatever. But they have a really cool symbol. So if I can work that symbol into you know uh, some cloaks you, or something, then yeah, you get uh, that's what I'm doing. You get uh, transfers made. For, for that symbol. Oh, that's what I'm talking. Yes, that I will do that. Yes. <laughs> and then, yeah. I recently learned how to put on transfers really well. And so finally, and so now I'm like transfer happy. I'm like, what can I slap a transfer on? <laughs> Dude, when you get that solve a set working right, I mean, it really is. And then you go that next level if you want and paint a little on the decal. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm not there, but uh, I can get them on a model looking really clear and really well done. And uh, that's, that's unlocking you know. some hobby power right there. Yeah. Well, I mean, it just adds so much to a model. It just it adds a nice little extra detail and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I was going to um, I was going to play, uh, you know, a bunch of open games. I was going to jump into the uh, the um, 
Space Hulk thing that these guys run. It's the 3D Space Hulk thing every year. I was very excited about that. That's kind of that's kind of my group's go to. But I think the thing I was you know most looking forward to was I you know I'm running a Patreon and stuff. I'm not trying to push that, but I, because of that, I was able to bring along several of my cast members to Adepticon. Like we were going to be able to have almost everybody there that's been on the show. Mm, that's and cool. So we were really looking forward to getting together. And what we really wanted to do was you know how. Games Workshop does that photo thing where you can hold like the bolter or mm-hmm. the sword. We wanted to get a picture of all of us because they could superimpose everybody into one picture. And we were going to have like the whole group of us so that we had one picture with all of us goofing off. Like and a just, squad of hell blasters. Yeah, it would be amazing. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. We'd make Justin carry the chainsword. He's the only one with the muscles that can do it. <clears throat> so it. well i mean next year look and hopefully yep. you know there's a bunch of other events that are kind of on standby for the rest of the year too so oh, yeah. you know for the people that i connect with i'm hoping to be able to do it later on in the year but there's also the stuff like this man like one of the reasons i want to have you on is you know i've been i've been at home a lot and we you know what a better time to catch up and yeah. you know record it why not yeah for sure i um yeah there is a lot of stuff getting canceled it's really important i'm, I'm I was actually i have a great trip planned with my wife in july and i think that's going to get canceled we were supposed to go to austria for the formula one race and i don't see that happening now um i'm pretty sure they're going to cancel the race so I, I it's just you know it's one of those things where we're like we're going to wait it out we're going to plan for something fun but um boy i, I can't look can't wait till 2021 Adepticon. Yeah, I mean, that's what we, I think we have to do as a people is just to kind of do the smart thing right now. And then, you know, then we get to have fun again. That's really, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. honestly though, real, I mean, this is me, my hobbies are ultimately suited for being inside. Yeah, it is. Uh, the thing that, that I think I get the most frustrated with is I really want to play some 40 K with my friends and, you can't do it, you know. Uh, fortunately, my wife is willing to play with me, and she has an Eldar army, so, um, <laughs> so you know, we've played a few uh, games and stuff. But um, you know, I have friends that we just play certain board games and that kind of thing. But we are starting to do some role playing stuff online, and uh, I'm hoping to actually play some of the old like uh, Dark Heresy and those kind of things online oh, as well. That'd be great, dude. If you need a if you need another member of the group, let me know. Okay, all right, well, I'll let you know. We're, we, we there's a couple of those games we actually want to cover, so. Um, you know, I want to play through it and kind of get everybody's thoughts and opinions on on the the, um, the themes and that kind of thing that underlie each of those games, even though they're not in production anymore, most of them. So uh, whatever. I mean, they're still great. Yeah. Uh, I posted this on my personal Facebook earlier today. But if anyone out there, I'm a bit of a of a board game or entertainment kind of sewer. Mm-hmm. And if, if anyone is looking for things to do, they can do at home. I will help tailor, you know, custom fit a game, you know, that's already out there. Uh, yeah. to whatever their environment is. If you're hanging out with a group of gamers, or if you, you live with a group of gamers, if you're living with a non-gamer and you, you want something to do, I'm happy to provide some ideas. You know, playing That's as cool. many board games as I have. I've yeah. uh, got kind of a, you know, there's there's things out there that are like rock, paper, scissor games almost. Rock, paper, scissor games with yeah. a twist that yeah. anybody can get. There's trivia games. There's Well, we've you know, been using a tabletop simulator a little bit for a few games there, and that works pretty well. I have to admit that works pretty good for board games. I have I, not used that yet, but I've seen it. Do you have to subscribe to that? No, you just buy the software and uh, it's very reasonably priced. You can get it on Steam and then you connect with your friends and there's there's both um, sponsored uh, games you can buy for it and then games that other people have like put in. They've done the work and put it into it. Mm-hmm. It's it's. It is really quite well done. You need to know how to play the game. like, And usually they include instructions with it, but you actually have to understand how to play the game. I assume um, to be able to navigate through the like yep. menus and stuff, know where, know what you're supposed to be clicking. It's in not even menus. mostly menus. It's, it's, you know, you're going through, you're playing. It's literally like the game is sitting in front of you and you're just moving mm-hmm. your things around and rolling dice and that kind of thing. So you should check it out. It's pretty cool. I want, I, yeah, I want to. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm not a huge board gamer. There are a few board games I really do enjoy, and uh, usually they have to be very, very themed to a theme I like, and the game has to, the mechanics have to really support that theme for me to really get involved in it. So, you know, I'm like a huge fan of like Eldritch Horror and like uh, most of the Cthulhu type of games. So. Yeah. yeah, I like That's- those a lot too. That it, There's the, the, where the setup, you know, you're, there's that light bit of admin that you do yeah. you know, that keeps they keep you in. in yeah, I'm with you. Well, that's kind of one of the nice things about that uh, tabletop simulator is it, uh, in many of the games, um, it's scripted. So it can actually like do the setup for you, which is actually really nice. So. Oh, man, I will. I will check this out. I mean, again, I'm kind of um, 
in a situation to where my like my oldest son, he just wants to play video games all day, so he's yeah. he's fine. You know, yeah. my yeah. youngest son, uh, he's in heaven. <laughs> the 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 confines of the house are still seem kind of large to him still, you know, so, and he yeah. can still go outside. So he's fine, you know, whatever. Yeah. And then, you know, and I'm content to sit here and paint Necromunda figures. I am almost done with my Goliath game. Oh, that's fantastic, man. Yeah. We had just uh, started our Necromunda campaign and now it's on hold. <laughs> so, <'cause none laughs> play. Well, that's what I started a, a, a group, local group of, and then, and this is before this hit, we were talking about it. And then I was like, you know what? Now we've got this time where everyone can work on their gangs. I actually helped right. distribute some gangs out to other people that I traded for, you know, on, on, you know, online and stuff. And just it's like, you, you guys build them however you want. And then we'll come together whenever we can later and, and play some games, but we get to learn the rules. Now we get to build our gangs, paint them, you know, and work on terrain. Yeah. I'm actually building some terrain and, you know, terrain, terrain is so important in Necromunda too. So yeah, yeah. I'm well, happy about cool, it. Man. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm really bummed. We didn't get to, to hang out for a bit, man. We will, we will make it happen. Oh, it'll be that much sweeter when we can. Yep. That's right. That's so, right. Uh, you what are you playing Necromunda? Uh yeah, yeah. I'm playing Goliath actually as oh, well. Oh, you are? Uh, yeah. Well, let's talk yeah. Goliath for a minute then. Sure. Uh I got I'm not particularly good at the game. I got most of my advice, as I said, from Dan and Campbell from the 40k Badcast. They're really into Necromunda over there. And um one of the things they taught me, I don't know if you want to talk about this online or you know, uh <laughs> behind the scenes, so you can lay it on. Oh, is this some super secret tech? No, nah, not really. But look at seriously invest when you have an assault gang, uh, a gang that needs to get in close for the combat and that yeah. kind of thing. Seriously, look at smoke grenades. All right. I'm not even joking because no, you throw just... things out in front of you. You block line of sight. And you just move up on your opponent while they can't see you until they I, until they buy the photo goggles or whatever they are that let them see through the smoke. But... My gang is um, a leader with a power hammer and a combi plasma. Yeah. Yeah. I got two uh, forge born with rock saws. Yeah. One uh, gunner duder. I don't know what is Goliath. <laughs> the middle, not the juve. The ganger. The ganger, yeah, with a shotgun. Yep. Uh, and then two with grenade launchers. Well, let me tell you. Uh, so my first day of the campaign went really well. I played two of the three games. I was by on the third game. And uh, I, I lost one game, but I had killed a guy on the other on the opponent's side, uh, and I'd done enough that I earned quite a bit of money. And then uh, my second game, I won, and I did quite well, um, just by pure happenstance, like by luck. Guys weren't That's expecting, okay. Guys weren't expecting the smoke grenades. <laughs> okay. And so, uh, so I did very well, and I was feeling really good. Then I did a skirmish game on an off day, because uh, the way the campaign works, you know, you play these skirmishes between it. And during that skirmish game... <laughs> game my opponent and i murdered each other <laughs> like so badly that uh he lost his gang leader um i lost my gang leader one of my champions and another ganger and another ganger got so injured he now has like back problems <laughs> oh man <laughs> on just a game that was worth nothing i just got brutalized and now i'm trying to figure out how i can reconstruct my gang because i've just been torn to pieces it, 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 that's half the fun of the game it's quite frankly seeing what happened it was it was one of the most fun exciting games i've ever played in necromunda but man it was brutal just I, I forgot to mention my sump croc. I have a sump croc. Oh, I just bought one. I just bought. Yeah, <laughs> I saw that. I didn't even know it existed. And then I saw it and I was like, what is that? That's and why it, I wanted to play the Goliaths. I mean, I heard yeah. they weren't the best, uh, but I was like, well, I get to play with this sump croc. So there's that. They are, they are not too shabby. I'll be honest. Um, yeah. And then I got uh, I got like that new like roided out guy. Um, yeah. I, I can't remember what the he's berserker? called. I yeah. Think yeah. 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 Zerker yeah. or something or something. Like that. I think it's just Zerker. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got him. So I'm kind of excited to to use him as well. We're showing our, our noobish nature on this or whatever. But oh, I, I really I'm, had a real good time painting the bases. Told, and, uh, have you played much yet? I haven't played in 20 years. Okay. Dude, let me tell you. The cool thing about Necromunda, like all all joking aside, it, there's, there's a lot of rule books to it. And there's a lot of flipping back and forth as to where you go for this and where you go for that. But when you're actually playing on the table, like it is very straightforward. You are not going to be thinking, oh, this is complicated. And how do I do this? And I'm looking this up and I'm looking that up. I feel like once you're actually playing the game, like it's playing very quickly. That's it's cool. all the it's all the um, 
the administration after the battle and what happens to your guys and you know and this kind of thing. I'm fine they, with that. Like Blood Bowl's similar, right? I love it's Blood very Bowl. very similar. I loved yeah. Necromunda back in the day. Like I I played the crap out of it a long long time ago. Yeah. And I know it's evolved a bit, but the mechanics are the same. It's evolved, but the spirit is still there, right? It's still the same spirit of the game. And uh, man, it, it's it's really well done. I have to say, it's really impressive. That's cool. I'm looking forward to it. I mean, again, this is just something to do. My some of my old time buddies, and I've told this story on air before, or whatever. But they're they're playing skirmish level games, and I've really enjoyed it. Like I I play a fair amount of kill team. Yeah, and, and I really enjoy kill team. I I do really like to be able to where I can can go over to my, my hobby shelf or go to the hobby store and get quite literally whatever I want, whatever appeals to me off the shelf yeah. and put it in the game and, and feel like you're doing something. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, and then it was just kind of the natural progression. Well, let's do something else. I mean, they've been playing Warhammer Underworlds uh, and, and then, you know, I, I actually used some Necromunda models on last year's Adepticon army uh, it, just as conversion pieces and bits and stuff. Cause it's mm-hmm. a treasure trove of bits. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some of these things, especially Caldor, just especially if you're doing chaos. Yeah. Caldor, uh, treasure trove. Good to know. And I was like, man, just stuck in my head. And then just with the, with the rapid releases of everything and, and the, the game being supported, I'm like, well, we might as well play. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we're doing. Well, man, it's, I think, I think you're really going to have a good time. And then maybe next year at Adepticon, we, we throw down a little uh, Necromunda as well. I mean, that'd be cool. Cause I mean, it's, it's tra- very travel friendly. That's what another thing about Kill Team. I can bring, you know, my, whatever my army is. And there's almost always enough room for six, seven more figures. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, most of the time anyway, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. So yeah, I may, I may pick your brain on this Goliath stuff because I don't have any of those grenade launchers. Uh, you know, but we, again, when you're going through and building your army list for the first time, I'm it's sorry, I, got, I don't have smoke launchers. grenades. I, I have the it's grenade the launchers. Smoke, yeah. 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 I got two grenade launchers. Uh, I thought about putting in the third, but I'm like, man, I got to have this crocodile. Yeah. <laughs> it looks so cool. <laughs> yeah. The rock saw is 125 credits. I know it's very expensive. My, like I'm it. telling you, I lost my my uh, leader and my champion, and that was a lot. Like my gang is decimated after losing. That. Yeah, that that sounds that sounds real bad. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm I'm still I'm gonna struggle through it and try to like rebuild the gang and see what I'm gonna I'm gonna get the snot beat out of me for a while, but I'll figure it out. And I that's did. one of the cool things about the campaign, too. It's not like I, we just talked about campaigns on our last episode, but it, it's really not about who won the campaign. There's like all these different accolades you get. Right. And it's it's usually a bunch of different things that you you go for. So it's it's pretty fun. Most tr- most of the fun's just seeing how your gang does and you know who dies and who lives. Yeah, and I'm with you. I, I, I want to go through that. I want to experience it. I mean, you know, there are things as the arbitrator. You can kind of do things if you want or whatever. We're just going to play yeah. through as is. Yeah. You know, there's random ammo rolls and that kind of stuff. But I, I've used this as an opportunity to try new paint things. Like I I painted hazard stripes on the bases on some of the stuff. I, oh, I, nice. Uh, my gang's armor is pink. Wow. I got to see these pictures. I'll send you a picture. Yeah. But it was just, just to give it a shot and see. Because I'm not, I, I've historically not been good at painting pink. I just kind of thought not too many figures to worry about. That's Maybe true. fewer people will see them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll learn something. My guys were all based on prisoners. So they have like orange jumpsuit pants and uh, I named them the smoke boys. <laughs> See, I've been trying to think of a name, a cool name too. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah. But my guys were all themed on like the, um, yeah, like they're all ex prisoners and they've like come out and, you know, they're all roided out because they're the Goliath guys. Yeah. I want the name to be, you know, I can you know, like the dead rabbits, you know, or something yeah. like, you know, but not, but not crude, you know? So I'm like, I'm just trying yeah. to think all in. Yeah. And then and I was sitting here and like in 10 seconds, I'll think of something crude. I'm like, no, I don't want crude. <laughs> yeah. Have you, have you started using yak tribe at all? Uh, I haven't. Yeah. Yak tribe dot games is the site that you want to go to. That's and, the builder, right? For the gang. Oh, it's, it's, it's more than that, but yeah, it's a gang builder, which is just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. No, it's, I did old school pen and paper. I'm like real, really will, retro. This will track your campaign and everything. It's really, really good. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So my, uh, yeah, my guys were named, um, uh, the smoke boys and, uh, and my, uh, was my leader's name? He's dead, so he's down here at the bottom. My leader's name was uh, <laughs> was Castle, and then I had two champions with them, and they were named Brick and Mortar. Oh, <laughs> and, cool! And then, and then, uh, like my gay, my guys were named uh, uh, Knuckles, Throwdown, Low Jack, and Dropkick. <laughs> it's so stupid. I love it. Oh, whatever. You know? No, it's a that's half the fun. 
It's yeah, half the fun of the game. I agree. I just so sent I you just, a couple of pics in uh, in in Messenger, but I post these up on my uh, my social media stuff outside of like my personal Facebook is just all hobby stuff. So like on my Twitter and Instagram, it's just all hobby and I follow all hobby people. And it's like a little bit of carved out hobby paradise whenever I go scroll those feeds because it's only people that paint stuff and build stuff. Nice. The other resource I would recommend for this is uh, Goonhammer. Um, Goonhammer is a website. Dan Boyd writes uh, a thing called uh, Necromondays and he writes articles about Necromondays. Super helpful stuff. Like he understands the ins and outs of it very, very well. So I'd highly recommend going and looking there too. Nice. I will. I will do that. No, this is a, it's been a fun experience, you know, especially, you know, new figures, paint something new. In fact, okay. it's a low model count. It's been, you know, you get to the point when you're painting and you're like, man, why did I choose this color? But at the same time, I feel like I felt that way with every single miniature I've ever painted. So, or at least every squad. Oh my God. <laughs> these guys look great. Uh, you sent fantastic. Um, I love it. Yeah. Still working on this. Still a little, little bit of work in progress, but you get where it's going, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, they look great, man. Yeah. It's fun. And, and you know, what's the harm i mean it's only you know seven or eight models at most so you can yeah. plow right through it yeah yeah you know, it's, it's been fun it's especially you know with the with the bases i I primed them and like layered up the paint differently than i have on other things yeah. uh so that yeah. was fun to try and, and it worked out i will do this again um and then the actually when i was going through the colors i'm like i'm good buddies with um gmm brandon palmer and every now and then uh-huh. when i'm stuck i'll just ask him you know like what color should i pick with this because he's a I mean, he's, he paints beautiful armies. In my opinion, he's the, like the best, like army display commission person around. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause it's just a total package, right? You know, when, uh, when you, when you right. see, get, see all this stuff and it's, yeah, I love the way he puts together colors and thinks of things that I, that I wouldn't. And uh, so You'd I never asked think him, of, right? am I making yeah. a mistake here? And, and he's, he's actually, he's really forgiving. Sometimes I wish he'd just tell me what to do, but he tries to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, get you to uh, come to your own conclusions. I'm like, no, just tell me what to do. <laughs> but awesome. he, he he told me that I was not too far off base with this pink and brass. And I was like, all right, cool. We'll go. No, I think it looks good. Yeah. I think you. it looks really good. Yeah. It has been, it has been fun. It's the, the neat, the neat figures and uh, the, the support, you know, with the stuff in plastic, the, um, the, what is the, it's not the forge born, but whatever that, that set of six figures or whatever that just came out for the glass was a, it's a, it's a cool kit. Yeah, I can't remember what they're called. Uh, I got a box of them. I can't remember what they're called. But yeah, yeah, it's got the forge born in it. It's got the, you know, the, the mid level, the, the initiates. And you also get, that's where you get the, uh, the big champions, the guy that can have the double assault cannons on his arm or something like that. It's it's crazy. That that book of chains is pretty nice too. If you're playing. Yeah, I got to pick that up. Yeah. You got to pick that up. It's pretty good. Well, what else do you know, man? You know, I had been painting Blood Angels. Uh, you know, but that's the thing about this team tournament. You need fig- you need four thousand points instead of two thousand <laughs> points. So I was yeah. painting a bunch of Sanguinary Guard, a bunch of Intercessors and and Infiltrators and stuff. Who, and were, your, who were your teammates? Runway Kids is my is my gaming club. Uh, co-captain with Justin Pizza Ferrazza, and so he was on the team. Uh, Will Bundy, a local tournament ace. He's he's like my main play test partner if i want to get my teeth kicked in i can i can play some games nice. with him and yeah you know, just a brilliant player and steve zyban who's a he's basically our sportsmanship ringer nice nice <laughs> you always got that's the most important award in my opinion but you know we've actually won it two years uh <laughs> nice yeah that's I, mean, like, I mean it's, it's a, we're, we're all about having a good time we typically yeah but one year we actually won it with centurion spam like with graph cannons were a thing like, yeah. yeah 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 <laughs> I remember. Oh my God. I remember the grav cannons. So yeah. Pain and blood angels, which again, that is, I love doing. If I could give me any excuse to feel some blood, I'm loving it. So I'm real, it's a real good time to be playing and thinking about 40 K right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll see. Uh, I'm very curious to see what the announcements are this coming uh, Saturday. I highly suspect they're going to announce ninth edition in development or maybe not a release date, but you know, that it's coming or, something or they're kind of anticipated i try not to speculate on too much like that i just I want to sit there and too, but that, that's the one that i am pretty sure uh they're gonna i was surprised they didn't announce it last weekend so oh well, they got two you know they can't go yeah they gotta spread out the love right <laughs> I, I did really like the uh fabius bow like i'm i've that i've always liked the bits more than the character you know? yeah i've never been a fan of him as a character so i don't have like like I like I like the lore behind him. I just don't see him on the table as a He is a proper jerk in, yeah, yeah. in the heresy, which I which I do appreciate. Uh, but no, his his he's never had the right rules. 
Like even right. in the early in second edition, when you know when he debuted, he the the rules have just never been quite good enough right. uh, to put him on the table. But I've used his backpack bits. I don't know if you remember. Well, you probably do. But back in the day, when you could you could mail order a single bit. That was actually uh, before me, but I have heard the of the glory days. I just assumed because because you're so old. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, I did I did just turn fifty this year. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had to, like everything else, we had to, my, my birthday was the weekend before Adepticon. We had to cancel my birthday party. We were going to have like 50, 60 people at the house. Just redo the 50th next year. That's what I said. I, well, I haven't turned 50. So yeah. the other thing I'm spending a lot of time right now is I just got, um, Saturnine, the collector's edition book, uh, of the, uh, Siege of Terra, the latest Dan Abnett one. So, no spoilers. Uh, I won't spoil a thing, but I, I will tell you the first three books have been each of those writers at the top of their game. Uh, I wrote an article, a brief article about my top five Horus Heresy books. Uh huh. I hope gets public. I, I don't want to say what the top five is, but I just got to go down, stroll down memory lane of my top five Horus right. Heresy books. Do you want to tell me what your top? Do you, you, you do you have a top two? You could, I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot for all five, but or yeah. four or for, four. Well, there's only uh, five books of Teaser Terror Library. already, so that's your top. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is for Horus Heresy or for Black Library in general? Uh, you can do Black Library in general, yeah. Uh, it's, without a doubt, for me, the two best books out there are Talon of Horus and Black Legion. Yeah, okay. Now, yep. the ambition of those books, it, it, the fact that they are written again, we, we have a, a decent idea of what yep. to expect off of two or three paragraphs in an, in an ancient tome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The fact that they're written, but they're you know they they were published before the conclusion of the of the Horus Heresy, and yet they still yeah. are epic. Well, I think they also just re envision Abaddon and 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 reset people's expectations for who this guy is and what he's all about and how dangerous he really really is. And I absolutely love that love that series. Um, you know, and I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot of people will choose you know, Xenos by Dan Abnett, the Eisenhorn stuff, you know, and that's up there for me too. Like up until that those black are the casuals though. See, Oh, no way. Those are amazing. I dude. know they are, but, th- but so those, those are so amazing. They have appeal past 40 K. <laughs> this is true. I, I used to tell people they're not just good 40 K fiction. They're good science fiction. Yes. Yeah. But the, yeah, the, once these two books came out and I tell you, I can't wait for the next one, uh, whenever that eventually comes out. But, uh, that, it, again, I also recognize I have a bias there, but I think it's a, it thinks incredibly, it's an incredible view into what this central villain kind of represents and why he's so, why he is who he is. I think. Yeah, you get to see a little bit of that that build yeah. up uh, of yeah. of him becoming his own without Horus, and yeah. and even starting to shed the shadow of Horus by the by the second book. Yeah. yeah, but not but not in a forced way, right? It's like a real, no, no, not it's at all. a real evolution. Yeah. Over, or the way the story is told. And then, you know, when they finally come out of the warp, there's that really neat scene. I, I even, I felt like that scene could have been another chapter longer. It's like, incredible. I don't, yeah. I mean, it's, but, but only because I wanted more, not because it didn't get to a conclusion or was very satisfying. I'm like, Oh man, I really want to, I want to have a whole nother. But know, I gotta tell you, I have a whole new, whole new respect for this uh, siege of Terra series. Like it has just been phenomenal. And like I said, uh, I think it's, you know, one of John French's best books, one of Guy Haley's best books, one of Gaff Thorpe's best books. I'm just now kind of diving into Saturnine, so we'll see how. I, I don't Evans. think French gets enough credit. He's fantastic. But I, again, I'm biased. I mean, he, he and I are friends, so I mean, we, you know, I, I kind of have to say that. <laughs> you know, uh, look, hey, look, nobody's listening. Say well, listen, want. I'll tell you actually. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. The first time I went uh, out to England to go to to Warhammer World. I met my friend Ed there, who was at the time he was the head of customer care for Forge World, and he and I had kind of built a relationship online, mostly because I order so much, <laughs> but also <laughs> because he listened to the show and we would talk occasionally. And then he said, "Hey, come over here. You know, some of the Forge World guys are over here for dinner. You know, come meet us at this restaurant." So I show up at the restaurant, and he's like, "Oh, you know, this is uh, Eve Packer, and this is this person, this is this person, this is John French." And I go, oh, John French, I go, hey, we just reviewed your book, Armin, Exile. And he goes, I know, I listened to it. And the thing was, like, <laughs> Jeff was, at the time, Jeff was my co-host, and Jeff was pretty critical of the book, whereas I was like, I, I like when he shot the stuff, and I like when he, you know, <laughs> like I was, I was actually a big fan, and Armin, I'm a big fan of that character, so I was very excited about the book. He's all, I know, I listened, and I go, hey, listen, man, like, I liked it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, but John was like, 
you know what though he goes jeff brought up some really interesting points this is some stuff i'm taking into account as i write the second one and i'm like well how do, how about that you know and so we sat down and talked for a long time and he and i have since become uh you know every time i go out there we we go out to dinner and That's drink cool. stuff and and he's just a fantastic gentleman he's he's an incredible guy he's he's the nicest of guys and um and and i think he's his his writing talent has you can see how it's improving that's that's the truth more. yeah you can see it's it's really i mean but it's like exponentially uh better i think yeah or uh more mature i don't even know what the right thing to say as i'm certainly not trying to be patronizing yeah, no, trivial, I know exactly you, know, what you're saying, like, you can see a progression i mean you can yeah. see it with dan abnett right you can see the stuff he wrote in eisenhorn and the stuff he writes now is very different you know but it also works on some of the same fundamental levels. John and Aaron, uh, Aaron Densky, like those guys are like the best of friends, right? So they are constantly talking to each other as well. So um, they're feeding off each other's ideas and thoughts. So it's it's very fascinating to see. I can't wait. I'm not caught up on the on the, the Siege of Terra stuff yet, but it's you know, so good. I need to be and I will be. I'm uh, I'm reading there, some other things and I'm just there getting... are scenes. There are scenes in some of these books like especially Guy Haley's book towards the end of Guy Haley's book. There were scenes where I just, I was sitting there reading it and, and out of my mouth, can we swear on your show? I don't, no, can I? <laughs> okay. Out of my mouth was, you know, holy bleep and bleep. You know, this is incredible. <laughs> like just the scene that they, he was painting and, and the, the reactions to certain characters. And you're just like, Oh my God, these guys are amazing. <laughs> and oh. by the way, your, your blood angels feature heavily in that. Uh, well, I hope so. Right. I mean, they, are the- they, they feature so heavily and so well, I was like, well, blood angels might be an interesting. Army to make. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not a blood angels fan, but I was like, okay, these guys are pretty awesome. And Sanguinius in particular. Oh man. Oh, man. All right. never mind. I'm reading it. As soon as we get off the, the phone, I'm reading. He it. is incredible. Incredible. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, Carl, man, I really appreciate you coming on and chatting with me. Well, thanks uh, for just let's do it again with yeah. me, man. I, I kind of miss social interaction. <laughs> yeah, let's do it again real soon. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll keep you posted on my how my Goliaths are doing. And when I get them finished, I'll uh, send them over to you for your seal of approval. Awesome. Awesome. And we'll we'll get together in 2021 and play them. Well, where can people find you if they don't know if they've been? Uh, so, uh, yeah, the Independent Characters podcast, you can find you know, wherever you get your podcasts, it's, it's there. Um, we've been going for about 10 years now and, uh, we just finally passed episode 200. Our shows are a bit longer than most. They're, you know, they can range between two and a half to four hours, but we have a great cast of characters that join us there. We talk primarily about hobby stuff and you know, we really delve kind of each episode into a particular, um, theme or aspect around 40k the 40k universe so anything that takes place in the 40k universe is is uh on point for us whether it's the role-playing games whether it's 40k itself necromunda anything that takes place in that universe we're, we're all about great man well carl great friend i'm happy to sit and talk with you i do want to do it again real soon yeah let's not wait as long next time thank you for thank you for the opportunity i appreciate it man man have a great night all right you're listening to forge the narrative we are back. Still got Adam and Red. Hello. Hi. All right. So we haven't talked about Fabius Bile. Can I spend a, can I spend just a second or two talking about the miniature itself? Go for it. Sure. What is he like? Uh, Vigo the Carpathian? Is that what it is? <laughs> uh, from man, Ghostbusters 2? I think it's Gordon Ramsay. It's Gordon Ramsay, man. And he's just turning his nose down to everyone else's creations. Yeah. By the way, I'm fine with both of these comparisons, by the way. Both awesome individuals. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's completely fine. But let me let's just chat about the miniature itself. You can look um, like on the community site, you can actually scroll down the page and, and you'll you'll see the old miniature and you scroll over and it, and it shows you the, the new miniature. And a couple of things that stand out for me is that one, it is... Basically, a, you know, almost like a one for one re retool of this character. It has all the same aesthetics just done with today's technology. And, uh, one thing is like, it stands out to me as like expressly different. And that's the color of his armor. The old character was painted with a black armor that, uh, like a, a really, really deep, deep, deep color with like a, with a reddish, highlight the new one has the more purple armor of the emperor's children hmm. yeah that's true now what we know about this character is that he's he was like anti space marines before anybody was anti space marines it's true way cooler than the the 
the traitors. Like the because fr- he wasn't a traitor. I think he just think he thought that he really did have a better way of doing things, and probably to him, chaos is just a means to an end. It, well, well, he yeah, thought he, exactly. he knew all the cheat codes. He's like, I had the cheat codes. The emperor thought he had the cheat codes, but I actually really have the cheat codes. Well, I mean, he yeah. has lived ten thousand years, so he's figured something out. Yeah. Well, he he knows how to create primarchs. Like he can actually make a primarch, in, according to the the law. Um, but yeah, of course, I think he needed. The, if you guys haven't read the Clone Lord books, the Clone Lord trilogy books, I highly recommend it. I, I don't. Yeah. Any, um, I don't want to give any spoilers. There, there's a lot of really good material in there about what he's capable of. It is awesome. I think did he need a um. Did he need um, a portion of an existing Primarch to make another one? I, I, I seem to remember. Didn't he get? He got one of the Primarchs, oh, like basically. Super well, yeah, in Tal- right? I mean, in, in Talon of Horus, he uh, stole Horus's body from the Black from the Sons of Horus, and then grew another one. That's in the so old lore. I'm not okay. sure if it was a- that was in the old lore. It, uh, yeah. I know it's in that, that that book as well, but that was in the very very old lore. Like Abaddon did spend a period of time going around. Now, it didn't say Fabius Bile, I don't think, uh, in the old in the old text. But Abaddon spent a significant amount of time going around and rounding up and killing horse clones. Yeah, he yeah. did. Yeah, because Fabulous Bill stole his body and kept building them, and he was like, "Well, I just I, this cannot stand." <laughs> <laughs> Plus, Abaddon, Abaddon, uh, Abaddon now absolutely hates Horus, which is an interesting turn of events from, of course, what people know from the first three Horus Heresy books where he absolutely adores him. Right. That's some great dichotomy. But yeah, now he's just, he was just, yeah, well, just great character building, great story, yeah. story building. That's very relevant to the uh, They're story apparently story. very similar. Uh, Carl, Carl's building a black, or has built a Black Legion force. He was actually the first buddy that I helped build a Black Legion army with, or at least contribute some ideas to. And so the the, the mm. last time we talked about it on our show was a completely different buddy that was building a Black Legion force. But we talked a little bit about Talon Wars right. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a good book. Yeah, like the, I, I wish you would complete the series because we've got we've got Talon Horse and Black Legion, and the, that's got to be there's got to be yeah, a few more because I think it's it's all building up to. Oh, it's coming. It's, uh, it's all building up to the first Black Crusade. It's building up to the first time the Chaos Forces, essentially the Chaos Marines, reemerge from the warp. And literally, Black Legion ends just as they've broken out for the first time in like 10,000 years. And it's really weird. They, they come across some uh, Black Templars and they're like, the hell is this? Because, of course, they've never seen the Black Templar because their you know, second founding is just not a thing. Like, they've now had no experience with the second founding. It just didn't even factor into their brains that this could happen. Uh, yeah, it's just really cool. Really cool. I keep scrolling over this miniature the, between the old Fabius Bile and the new Fabius Bile, and it's mesmerizing. Uh, but they so I mean, the, just did a fabulous job. Yeah, well, and, and what's cool is that, like, so in his lore, you know, so Bile uh, was under instruction from uh, Homunculi from the, the Dark Eldar, right? And you can definitely see in, like, the his cloak and the detail that they've given and everything and the way the, the, the arms to his backpack are and everything like he has he if there could be a space marine homunculus he definitely fits the bill no, that's neat mm-hmm. I, I just like it that he is just a real he's a real jerk like he's a real bad guy in a world of bad oh, guys he's he's like a, <laughs> the worst you know like motivations are mm. absolutely purely selfish like let's leave in, let's talk about like the the primarch's motivations most of them are not super selfish like you know lorgar his flaw needing something to to attach himself to 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 needing something to gratify so he could find um wholeness within himself i mean that's while i guess you could say that's selfish that's not necessarily evil in it you know in and of itself in the in the very beginning uh angron just really mad that none of his people were brought up like all the other primarchs were yeah, yeah who did nobody hmm. on his planet got well, brought up nobody nobody he loved and cared about actually made it yeah none of his Whereas soldiers everyone else was sort of surrounded by like their brothers and sisters and all this stuff and yep he's just all got butchered and yeah of all and of course he had the he had the worst run of it as well like he never really had a freaking chance did he um yeah. <laughs> like a chance to be well he never had a chance to be anything other than what he was so like Fa- fabius Ball and lucius you know who becomes lucius the eternal both just like real jerks and both coming out of the Emperor's Massive children. Massive jokes. Yeah. The, the Clone Ward series, if you haven't, if you don't get a chance to read it, if, I, I highly recommend you do. They, they do such a good job of character development with Fabius to a certain extent that it, it's, uh, it's really good. It, it, 
I, I'm not saying that that it doesn't show him for being the monster that you're painting him by any means, but it definitely gives some very good introspection into exactly what's up with him and kind of the direction he's meandered along to a certain degree. Uh, the, the bit that I love most about him is that he, he creates monsters and he creates all these fantif- fantastical creations and he can't create himself a hairline. Like he just, it's beyond him. <laughs> <laughs> he cares not for these things. I bet it kept, I bet he did. <laughs> But it kept it getting totally caught in his little man. drills and uh, and yeah, saws. Yeah, yeah. But that's so, what's happened. So he's like, you know what? No, nope, we're just going with the riffraff. <laughs> wow, he's given up. Unlike unlike some other politicians, we can name. <laughs> <laughs> Playing an unfit, dear hope. Oh, uh, but I. We, uh, we all know it's a jeez. <laughs> with with the character though, he's never been really playable. Like as far I shouldn't uh, say playable. Everything's playable, right? But he he's never been this like build around force. Either he's he's mm. he's never given enough buffs out, or just they you, you, or you rolled randomly or something, so you always had a uh, an yeah. op, you know an option opportunity to get a stinker or something. I, I hope that there's a you know there's an eye on that. And every like other time you tried to buff a unit, you'd kill a couple of dudes. Or oh yeah, yeah. there was always a I don't know. It was never quite a yeah, always just, beneficial proposition. Yeah, never got there. You, but you know, the, the, which is also fine. You know, you, if you if you like the model, want to play with the model. I know a lot of people that that, that own the model. I include I own mostly the bits of the model. Uh, but <laughs> but being able to play with them, you, you know, you, if you wanted to play them, you could. But it was it was just never something that you he was never feared on the tabletop. And maybe he's not that kind of character to be feared. But I think that you know these I, I see him. As entering engagements with a legion of altered creatures and beings and stuff specifically mm. designed for whatever the engagement is. And that, that maybe that's just me, but I mean, obviously things can go wrong, right? I guess, but I just don't, we don't want to experience that the failed test tubes or whatever on, on our 40K game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We only, only want to take things that add. We never want to take something that, that takes away or it's a risk. Uh, I suppose that's that's indicative of us as gamers more than anything else. Yeah, yeah. It's the competitive side of me coming out. You know, again, this wonderful model and, and look forward to trying to give it a go with painting and or or using those bits on another model like last mm. time. Because <laughs> uh, that the, that backpack is awesome. Now, you know, especially if you're building like a a mechanicus type thing, you know, this, that that backpack and some of these parts in the cane it will go on any model and look amazing. Uh, his his cane is hilarious. Mm-hmm. Firstly, why? <laughs> and then secondly, why not? Now that we have, now that he has, it? yeah, like why have more leg or something? You know, why not just yeah, yeah. Yeah, why can't you? Why do you need a cane, brother? You're like <laughs> you create Primarchs. There's a and you lot. Can't fix, that's, <laughs> you that's, can't grow a hair. <laughs> yeah, that's why his hairs are this. I mean, he wants to look this way. There is nothing yeah. accidental about this dude. No, yeah, exactly right. There's literally nothing. So yeah, you have to come to the conclusion he looks exactly like he wants to look, like yep. that Gordon Ramsay face. He's like, you know what? That I'll have that. That'd be lovely. <laughs> so now we've got to fill, you know, like a statue of the emperor with some ooze. Play some old timey rock music and figure out how to defeat this guy. And yeah, and don't let him get any children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too. Where's Sigourney Weaver when you need her? Yeah, she she'd kick his. <laughs> That's interesting. It's interesting. We've got like a Rambo. We've got a. We've got all these. Other, we've got a, an Arnold Schwarzenegger. We've got a all these other. Um, you know, I guess guardsmen as iconic action characters. We don't have a Sigourney Weaver. That'd be pretty good. Uh, yeah. Well, we've got. You know, we we do have the female Katachin model. The 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 metal. That's one. true. The, the which old is metal absolutely bad. Oh, both yeah. of them are. The old one's fantastic as well. Yeah. The new one's great. Yeah. Equally great. Although, but that's a throwback uh, to another Aliens character, I think. Not Warner Weaver, but... Oh, uh, yeah. Vasquez. Vasquez, yeah. yeah. I think. Yeah. I mean, right? I would imagine. Got to be. No, well, I don't mind. I, d- I definitely do not mind that 80s nostalgia at all. Me either. That, yeah. that movie is... We, we were talking about incredible movies before, like movies that changed the game. And I was talking about how Jaws was really like... There was really nothing kind of its kind before Jaws. And Jaws really brought up the, the monster animal or fear. Like, how many people... I, I had a fear of swimming after Jaws, watching Jaws when I was a kid. I think I watched it when I was 10 or 11 years old. Maybe it was too early. Maybe it was not early enough. But yeah, I was like, oh, crap. I could just get eaten by a shark now. Um, I wasn't going to get eaten by a shark. Wherever you are. are. It turns out there are very, very, very few shark attacks and shark-related deaths in the world every year. But you would think there were every other day, you know, by the way people have this fear of the deep. Do you know what the, the tagline for Jaws 4 was? Revenge of the Jaws? Does, Red, you want to take a, take a guess? Uh, man, I can only imagine like Jaws one, Jaws two. You know, it was probably something like good. Uh, Jaws after when you talk about Jaws four, I go ahead. Go this ahead. this time it's personal. <laughs>
Oh, good God. <laughs> so it is. if I remember, I know, and I could look, I, I could be wrong about this, but I believe this. I think this is something I've carried with me. But uh, the, the the shark, Jaws, I don't know what his name is. Jaws. Jaws. <laughs> swam the, from the, like, the line of Jaws. Yeah, you know, one end of the coast, one edge of the coast to the other to hunt this family. That's right. That's right. Yeah, because his son joins the Coast Guard. And at the very beginning of the movie, spoiler alert, the shark kills his son. And then it hunts him down. But he's like, he's already out. It's like, it's his wife that ends up being the, it, it's bad. Oh man. Ugh, heard that one up. <laughs> I don't know how we got here, but you know, I don't mind this trip down. Uh, <laughs> Sigourney Weaver, Jaws. We jump. Yeah. Hey, hey guys, we, we jumped a shark on this one. <laughs> good call. Good, good. Uh, which which is a Happy Days reference. I don't know. I got that's that's right. Hey, so War of the Spider, Fabius Fabius Bile is the spider, and he has per the preview, he has his own like sub faction in that book supposedly. Yeah, it's going to be really neat to see how that that all plays out because I do. I want. I would like this to be a build around character because I just think uh, if anything calls for it, it it is somebody who has the potential to make his own you know gene warped army was there whispers of him having primaris of he's got primaris essentially like two wound uh chaos space marine marines uh, that, that's i mean that's that's people i think more wish listing speculative yeah yeah but he does the books, well yeah i mean if you read the books he he has some uh primaris like he you know there there's he definitely gets his hands on primaris so yeah he gets the gene stock or the the gene suit over and um sick i think that's good I think it was a, in fluff wise. If we're following the narrative of 40k, it's only, it was a bound to happen eventually. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, the the Marines are already the, the Chaos Marines are already the size of exactly Marines. Uh, and and power armor needs that two wounds. You know, I think that you yeah, absolutely I think so. Have to have yeah. it for I, to just to hold up the point cost. I mean, of what they are. I mean, let, unless you just discount them. If they, but if you've got ten point space Marines, does it feel like a space mm, Marine? No, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> I. uh I agree. I think the second wound is absolutely necessary. Look at how much of a game changer intercessors are now. I mean, would would Ferris Iron Hands intercessors be a thing if they are one wound? God no, absolutely God no. They would be actually be trash. Yeah, yeah. So so I hope we see this stuff kind of come out with chaos. But uh, the game in my and I've said this before, but I think the game is is better when there are like really really strong bad guys in the game. You know, because some, absolutely. I think some people are going to play with one faction forever and i think that some people do want to play you know those loyalists loyalist or xenos or whatever and they they want a strong like i'm building this because my the lore says i fight that and that is powerful and so i've i've got something to do now this game has purpose for me mm, agreed so i'm looking forward to it i mean again we're seeing nothing but, but cool stuff happen but and we know not i'm not just i don't want to speculate too much but i just i, I want that to be a strong force in the game and want chaos to be be brutal yeah me too i feel like well i i know in my heart from a especially from a comic book cartoon anything point of view a thing is only like a hero and a good force is only as good as a bad force and the thing is this technically it's it's tune your own tune your own adventure with who you want to be the good guys and the bad guys in 40k like literally everybody can be the bad guy and everybody can be the good guy it's just really a perspective i think having the depth in every faction the propensity and having like literal bad guys and good guys in every faction like there's very little denying that a bad by right now is is a bad guy he, he's done so much <laughs> and he's got he's gone down a rabbit hole i mean you can't be like oh but you know that time he killed that trillion of in, you know innocents he, like surely he was justified like there's not it's it's too far gone now somewhere between black crusade four and six or some he crossed he crossed the line yeah, on but, the, uh, <laughs> the 13th and a half crusade <laughs> yeah when he ticked over his uh like one millionth personal like death murder i like that there's still that depth in each faction like alpha legion you could be you could be a chaos player playing alpha legion be like you know what in this fight in this battle in this scenario right now i'm the good guy uh you can't say that about many other things many other subcultures or genres or games or stories like out there in the world it's something that's pretty unique to 40k i do well, like and, and fantasy there's a um, and, there's a uh, like a theme within 40k is that you never know if what even you're reading is the whole story you know like yeah it, 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 and it may, it's a little bit that's probably a little bit less now like with the the horse heresy narrative but 
with every like all of the the main like the current universe 40k novels it's always been like well this is just what's happening in this little part of the galaxy or this might only be part of the story or whatever and that's all there's always been a little bit of magic in this yeah dude magic's a great way to say it yeah. that's how i feel that's how it's felt to me ever since i was a kid like it's always been this kind of magic about the the setting the fluff the characters yeah uh, i think i remember hearing one of the the, the game designers use the word mysticism a very strong sense of mysticism Perfect. running through it for a for a sci-fi, you know, something that when we talk about science and whatnot, like, you know, Belisarius Call, you know, bless his heart, coming out with real science and, you know, hover tanks and all kinds of stuff. But like everybody else, I mean, uh, one of my favorite things to hear is when people talk about the, the, the tech priest, like rubbing butter into, into machines <laughs> that uh, it's, you know, just to, that they think is going to like, you know, please the machine spirit or something to make it work like they are they are. The mysticism element really adds mm. some some interesting stuff to it. It's funny. I like it a lot. Yeah, I agree, man. I'm absolutely loving it. And looking forward to these Psychic Awakening releases. I mean, it's one of those to where you, every army, again, sorry, footnote, Gene Sealer cult, many apologies, <laughs> mm. but we're all getting a little something extra to play with and, and a little bit of lore, you know, supercharged and stuff. Don't mind it at all. Me either, man. I think it's fantastic. And so, Award of Spider is, um, they haven't set a release date for it, is it? And they haven't said it when it's going to be on pre order. Um, I don't think so. Any, I would have to imagine, though, that a lot of things are getting kind of pushed right now. Yeah, me too. But, you know, as soon as we hear something, we'll let you know. We'll let anybody listening know. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, guys, this has been a, a fun chat. I, I know we tune in next week where we will have a podcast. We're going to have a live stream uh, going out to YouTube and Twitch and maybe Facebook. So, wherever you find us, uh, please. Leave us a, a like. If you're in a place where you can leave a five star review, please leave us a five star review. Uh, leave a comment. That's something that you know we really appreciate digging on. Messages and stuff. I know there's a lot of people that are building army list right now, and I've talked to a lot of folks that are looking for hobby projects and things to do. If you are confined with uh, some people that are at different levels of gamerness, you know, like you're really into it, and some other folks aren't, and you want to know. Maybe what some things you can play with them. I'm happy to provide some suggestions. I have a lot. I've, I've played a lot of games, have a lot of games, and 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 typically play like board game type stuff uh, with with folks that are not super hardcore into gaming. So maybe you want to get one of those as opposed to a grindy, crunchy game like 40k or whatever. Happy to chat about that kind of stuff. Me too. If anyone wants to hit me up, and uh, I think Paul's the the better option. He's been doing this a lot longer than I have. But if anybody's bored, wants to talk. Dark, wants to tell me about all the names I got wrong. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> Man, my, my God, I got a lot wrong today. I'm sure people are going to let me know about it. I'll, I'll, tr- I'll try to leave as much in as I can in the edit. <laughs> so there's he- hex- Hexagamaton. Hexaga- Hexagrammaton. Hexagrammaton. That is the six wings of, uh, Sp- of Space Marine Legions. And the Dreadwing was the one I was talking about before. So the Dreadwing's like the final sanction, as in like this this planet is beyond redemption. Wipe it. Just wipe the whole thing. Press the hard reset button. Full restore. Back to its original settings. That's, <laughs> that's where all they keep. The Dreadwing? Yeah, that's the Dreadwing. That's, it's so much cool fluff there. But never mind. We'll touch that on another time. Uh, that ship has sailed, Adam. That failure has been locked in. I love this of time. redemption story you're trying to create for yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to dig up, boys. <laughs> <laughs> whatever i edit out just know there was like 60 percent more <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> 60 <more. laughs> that's like everything i say and do though 60 percent garbage 40 percent maybe usable oh well, th- thanks again for everyone that bore with us on our on our failure to launch stream and then check back in with us next week and guys red adam thanks a lot for joining me thanks Good for having us me. see you soon Corner.